Hi, my name is Carl Herzog. I'm the public historian for the USS Constitution Museum. And this piece of artwork is definitely not part of the collection of the museum. It's in fairly bad shape and it actually has no real historical value. This is a, a print of a constitution that was printed in huge quantities in the 1920s as part of a restoration of the ship. And it was then framed by someone uh, who received a copy of it and did a pretty incredible job of framing it. It's now fairly beat up over the years since then. It was given to me by a friend who found it helping a friend clean out a family house and thought that I would like it. I've kind of hung on to it because even though it has no other intrinsic value, it clearly had value to somebody. As a memento of the ship, as a meaningful uh, symbol or souvenir of the ship, someone saw fit to take this inexpensive print and have it fairly elaborately framed. Um, and kept it for apparently a very, very long time. Mementos of the ship are interesting and fascinating that way to me. I think that people find things that give them some source of point of reflection um, about the past or a souvenir. Um, and Constitution throughout its time is filled with these kinds of souvenirs that people have kept. A number of them have ended up in the collection of the museum because they developed historical value over time, but for a lot, they remain valuable only to the person who has them and who gives them meaning and value. But then it is easy to see why this particular print and artwork would have been valued by anybody and was by hundreds of thousands of people who bought copies of this print. The watercolor was a commissioned piece of artwork done by Gordon Grant, who was a commercial artist, a popular commercial artist at the time. Grant had also was famous for having uh, done the cover of the first Boy Scout handbook, a lot of artwork for them, and a lot of popular magazine covers at the time. The original watercolor actually produced by Grant that was given to the Navy is now uh, at the USS Constitution Museum. Grant's prints were among a number of souvenirs that were produced in the 1920s during this massive restoration. And the USS Constitution Museum has acquired a lot of examples of these souvenirs over the years. This is actually an ad that was published uh, announcing that you could access these and purchase them at the time. Uh, the ad, too, is actually in the collection. You can see a number of uh, Constitution souvenirs on the museum's collections website under the category of souvenirs. A lot of these share the common thread that they are made from wood that was removed from the ship as part of that restoration. Even if it wasn't wood that dated back to the 1790s when the ship was originally constructed, there's something about the wood coming out of Constitution that continues to resonate and have meaning for people today. Even the most recent restoration wood and both the copper sheathing uh, that came off the hull is frequently turned into souvenirs or uh, just turned into mementos all by themselves. This is another memento that was made from wood that came out of USS Constitution. And this is another object that is not in the collection of the USS Constitution Museum. This photo was actually shared with me uh, just this week by a gentleman whose father received this in 1975 when he retired from the Charlestown Navy Yard when it shut down from being an active duty Navy Yard. This desk set, uh, which consisted of a pen holders and the centerpiece showing that the oak had come from the ship. For him, the fact that this was given to his father at the end of his career in the Navy Yard adds to the significance that comes from it being wood out of USS Constitution. We see objects like this really frequently at the USS Constitution Museum when people call to inquire about the nature of something that they've received or have had in the family for a long time. Because of the popularity of these kinds of souvenirs and the sheer number of them that have been produced over the 200 plus years that the ship's been in active service, 
We see these kinds of things coming up very frequently at both antique auctions as well as on eBay. And the museum's curatorial department gets phone calls, like I say, all the time from people who not only want to know about the details of it, but are frequently asking what's it worth. Please don't call us at the curatorial department to ask what it's worth. We're legally and ethically forbidden from providing any kind of appraisal or assessed value uh, of any of these souvenirs. And as I say to us at the museum, the value of them is in their historical value, not in any kind of monetary resale value that they may have. But because the popularity of them creates a market for them, there are also counterfeiters of some of these objects that have been found on eBay. When they pop up, the U.S. Navy will jump on it pretty quickly. They don't really like seeing the reputation of the ship diminished by counterfeit elements of USS Constitution being sold off as true portions of the ship. One of the other types of popular mementos associated with USS Constitution is purely ceremonial. It is United States flags that have been flown from the USS Constitution. Each year in the summertime, when the ship is doing its normal turnaround cruises, they will uh, sell flags uh, on the deck that have been specially raised and lowered uh, on USS Constitution. There's nothing special about the flag, and there's nothing intrinsic about the actual material or the cloth of the flag. Its only direct connection is the fact that it was flown from USS Constitution as the flag on board Constitution. But the significance and meaning that that event, that that flag participated in, gives it its own meaning for the people who purchase them or give them as gifts. Another incredibly popular memento, if you want to think about it that way, of the ship are ship models and model ship kits that you can build yourself. There have probably been more different kits made for models of Constitution than any other ship, at least in the United States. And there's certainly probably been more models of Constitution built than any other ship model in the United States, at least. In England and other parts of Europe, a few other ships, including definitely HMS Victory and probably Cuddy Sark, might beat out Constitution for that record. This particular example of a mo completed model ship kit is the plastic Ravel model kit in 196 scale. They also make it a smaller 1196 scale. The USS Constitution Museum has a number of examples of models of Constitution in our collection. Needless to say, uh, because of space constraints and duplication of, of collection items, we are very uh, discriminating in the ones that we are able to include and accession into the ship's collection. But despite that, about one in every five calls that we get at the curatorial department is from someone who wants to donate a ship model that they or relative produced of Constitution. Models of Constitution have, I think, incredible value at a number of different levels. Uh, if you are just observing a, a ship model, it is uh, a fascinating way to get a sense of all of the details that the ship encompassed when it was fully rigged and operational under sail at any given time in a period of time in its history. There are actually models that have been built of the ship when it had a barn over the deck of it as a receiving ship um, for the Naval Academy and, and shipyards up in Portsmouth. Other models and model kits of Constitution show off different aspects of the ship that changed over time as well, too. But if you're actually building the model of Constitution, it provides a sense of reflection and understanding of those details of the ship that's pretty much unmatched in any other experience. It's only by going through that step-by-step -step process of assembling and crafting each of the pieces of the ship, assembling its detailed rigging uh, and sails and all of its guns, that you really get uh, an intimate sense of the makeup of the ship. I think that probably accounts for why the models continue to be so popular. 
I know I built one of these as a kid myself, and the hours I spent taught me a lot about the rig on this ship. Although mementos and souvenirs for USS Constitution continue to be produced today, occasionally they do develop historical value over time as their similar examples of them uh, disappear. The USS Constitution Museum has, as I said, an extensive collection of souvenirs, but they actually go back to 1812. The earliest celebrations of Constitution that appeared in objects that people could buy and keep in their home began immediately after Constitution's first victories in the War of 1812. You'll see milk pitchers, uh, ceramic ware, there were textiles, uh, cloths, uh, quilt-like um, materials, all of which served as souvenirs for people who wanted to celebrate, commemorate, and have um, examples of the Constitution uh, in their home that they could continue to think about and reflect on. The meanings that those souvenirs and mementos then, as well as today, have for any individual person obviously varies from person to person, but it is the uniqueness of that individual experience that makes each one special to whoever has it. If you've acquired your own souvenirs or mementos of USS Constitution recently or a long time ago, don't hesitate to share them with us on social media. You can post your stories and images to our page on Facebook, Instagram, or on Twitter. Let us know what you've got and what it means to you and how it connects you to USS Constitution. If you have any questions or comments, you can also post those to our social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and if you have any other ideas or questions about future episodes, uh, don't hesitate to let us know that too. Thanks a lot.